Ah, Minden video. Yay. Uh, anyway, so, um, Beardy Man, Mr. Glib, whatever. Kermit the Glib, I don't know. Um, it's made three videos, and you know, all, in a sense, defending um, the, it's the don't worry, be happy kind of nonsense. Uh, none of it can be controlled, no worth, there's no value in complaining. Anybody complaining has just silly notions in their head about anything possibly changing or the world evolving or intelligence doing something the we will never escape whatever some sort of primitive behavior you know we'll never learn to use toilet paper or, you know wash our hands or something like that before birthing babies or whatever we can't learn anything can't change anything can't do anything so just sit back and whatever eat cheese and uh pretend everything's fine just so you can get through your life blah 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 be part of a little Borg live for silly values um, don't take anything seriously um, because the rich are doing just fine so don't really worry <laughs> and that's really all comes down to as long as the rich are doing fine everything's okay uh, poor people fuck them um, their welfare couldn't possibly mean anything um, the welfare of the middle class couldn't mean anything. The only thing that's important is the rich are doing really well and we have policies in place that will keep the rich rich. So don't worry. Everything's fine. Something like that. Um, so I'll play some clips from these. But they're, they're, he's just, uh, you know, he's just gotten so stupid. Um, and I don't really understand where it comes from. So, he's, so for years he does a website about peak oil and peak money in a sense that um, seems to think it's important enough to do all that and then he uh, blows up all that research five or six years worth because he basically concluded that oh yeah the financial banksters know what they're doing they actually have a really solid plan uh, we'll just keep borrowing money forever and everything will be just fine because somehow all of that bad debt somehow won't actually turn into a problem somewhere in the future the fact that you'll never have an interest rate high enough where the average person could save money in a bank and actually make a little money. <laughs> that world will never exist ever again. Because it can't. As a practical matter, interest rates can't rise to any kind of you know, real level. Um, because the burden of the previous debts are so high that the, it would create all kinds of um, bankruptcy as a practical matter. Um, no money for anything else but the payments to the landlord. That's it. You know, no money for food or heat or anything else. You just pay the landlord and die. Um, and that's the world we're heading for. We're sort of in. Um, and that's why certain things that used to be traditional won't exist ever again. <laughs> so anyway, and yet the world doesn't change. Everything stays the same according to him, even though it's completely different. So you go back to like the 1950s model after the, the the Great Depression did some great things. I mean, it's really bad that it killed people, starved to death, all that kind of shit. But it's really good that it cut a lot of rich people, cut them right off at the knees, you know. And um, basically did a bunch of um, debt forgiveness, uh, debt jubilee. It's essentially what the Great Depression was, is a debt jubilee. And... Um, <clears throat> So there was a fair starting field again, um, in terms of a balance between human beings. A lot less rich people, let's just say it that way. And um, America boomed, and it continued even after the war and all that kind of bullshit, um, because the people making money were the people working, not the people, not the owners. And slowly but surely, we, you know, especially with the Ronald Reagan revolution, they decided the rich weren't rich enough. We needed to float their boat. And so the percentage of ownership of the society and the percentage of rent being paid started increasing. So even they called it people buying homes and people doing all this stuff, but people weren't really doing that. They were borrowing homes. They were renting homes and they called it a mortgage, but it was still a rental agreement um, to hugely inflated prices. So um, the and then the debt and the national debt just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and all that money just makes the rich richer that's money in their pocket um, all the interest goes to them that's who we're paying uh, 400 billion dollars a year we're just shoveling it into the rich man's pocket um, in interest 
um, just on the bonds. Really bad idea. Um, and then all the money we've given them in these semi-covert ways um, by FDIC insuring their bad assets. They bought bad stock. The government bought the bad stock from the rich. So the stock is junk. Guaranteed it and then resold it to the market as guaranteed junk with FDIC insurance that now won't be FDIC insurance. Now the FDIC insurance is ruined, can't possibly work, can't possibly function as insurance. And this guy says we all should just shut up. There's nothing to talk about. No shenanigans going on here. Nothing for any people to be uh, hyper or upset about or agitated. And um, so I would agree that some of the commenters in public forums in different places they're not really identifying the true problem. They get it wrong. They say something like, it's the Fed, you know, when what they should be saying is, it's the rich. So they get certain little things wrong, but the fact that they know something's really wrong, they know that wages have dropped more than 50% in 45 years, that that's a real problem. That ain't good for them, okay? And if, the re if you took all that rich money and put it back in the economy, all the inheritance wealth, you'd actually get paid three times as much at work. Your salary would be relatively three times bigger. You'd have three times more purchasing power in the world. And if you actually let some kind of uh, not-for-profit bank exist, you know, if the government created a not-for-profit, independent, not a government bank, just an independent company, um, you know, where you just hire the CIO, CEO, he's, he's, he's voted on, elected, and you just run it as a bank for no profit, no owners to pay off, no banksters involved. Um, you know, then we could do our commerce and we could do our, we could have our lives without being ripped off by commercial organizations and all this Google ads and all this other crap that we're paying for that's useless. But no, nobody should talk about any of these subjects because Mystic thinks everything's just fine, it's just the way life is, and nothing can ever be changed by anybody talking about anything. Talking is crap, in his opinion. So if you complained in, uh, <clears throat> before World War I that our policy against the Japanese was too aggressive and excessive and we're just gonna provoke a war, that's just bullshit. You don't, you don't have any conversations about that kind of crap. You know, instead you let your kids get killed. I mean, it's just so fucking stupid. The least people can do is talk and comment and be angry. That's the minimum required to be a, a sensible, decent person watching the, you know, we're watching the Titanic going out on its voyage and we know they haven't closed those fucking doors. You know, the doors that <laughs> make the whole thing work? Those doors are broken. Just like the FDIC insurance, the doors weren't sealed. And the whole point of the design, the guy who made the boat and said this is the unsinkable boat, well the whole point of the unsinkability was completely ruined because you know they got flowers in between the doors, the doors wide open with little flower arrangements and shit and it's just plain stupid. You defeat the whole purpose. It can't be unsinkable if you leave those fucking doors open. So anyway, I mean little things like that's good for somebody. Somebody knows the doors on the Titanic are open. They should say, the fucking doors on the Titanic are open. Close the fucking doors. Quit giving the fucking inheritance wealthers more IOU tickets so they can keep claiming they own us. Quit signing rental agreements for your life. With these scum that this asshole defends. Ugh, this is a pathetic pile of puke he spews. So anyway, this video was just fucking silly. So he calls it Bulls Short, and it's just silly shit. So it's mostly about um, <clears throat> the fact that people short currencies. Um, so when you know uh, your currency is going to do, let's say, the, the dollars in better shape than the pound, you would migrate your debt, try to uh, re- uh, finance your debt if you have debt into British pounds because you'll have to pay back less as the debt is due because the in the future the dollar will be worth more so it'd be a good idea to be in the currency that's worth less and so 
But if you're not in debt, it'd be no point in getting in debt for that purpose because it'd be better just to, you know, buy a bond or something um, to own the currency and profit. Well, buying a bond will be exactly the opposite. The thing to do would be sell your bonds um, because um, the fact is, is if your wages still aren't growing, there's no point in, you know, paying any debt, you know, any su su substantial debt. But clearly, you, you can you could sort of see the logic that if your loan is at two percent and inflation's at three percent, that you'll be paying your loan in money that's less valuable than, you know, so as you can't lose. And that's sort of the problem with this new economy. It, that's why interest rates get so convoluted. And so, but anyway, and we playing that racket or only playing that racket. Who are they? Who are they getting the money from? Who are they stealing the money from? Well, the people whose currency is being devalued. So, there, so you know, and he's he's sort of proud that these are part of the. This is part of the game the institutions play, and somehow people shouldn't complain about it as as being totally uh, culturally destructive, to be stealing from the society's liabilities. You're stealing it from the people of the country whose currency has been devalued. I mean, it's clearly, the money doesn't come from nowhere. It comes from somebody. It comes out of somebody's fucking pocket. This glib asshole couldn't care less about any idea of fairness or figuring out that, well, we shouldn't be manipulated that way. People should be given a fair contract in life. We'll pay you a fair wage, and that fair wage will be worth something in the fucking future. Too short. Pelican and chips. <laughs> oh, okay. He's so convinced that everything's going down. Got it. I remember. Absolutely now. no problem. You can write about it on the interwebs, but if you want to make out of it, then you short it. And how do you short a currency? You borrow. It's as simple as that. You borrow. It's the government and the central bank by pegging a two percent inflation rate, or it's come down to three. Right, right. And then, but as you borrow, quote unquote, then the interest rates on the borrowing goes up because demand for the, the, the debt goes up. Cycle. Bad news for the country attempting to borrow new money. In this is, it gives you a 3% guarantee every single year to borrow money. You short the currency. That's, you know when you, you, you will have known that. If you want to show yeah, yeah, this is the racket the rich play. So again, this isn't it's something regular people do. So he keeps talking like you, you, you. Like some regular person can play this game. No, the rich get to play this game, not the poor. The stock, you've got to borrow the stock. It's exactly the same. To short, just short the, the pound, just borrow money. It's easy as that. And if you so well, of course, it's not easy as that, right? Because obviously the rich can borrow at insanely good interest rates because they have lots of you know fake assets they have stocks and bonds and all kinds of crap that they can put up as collateral so they can borrow at these low interest rates that the banks are paying based on you know their the shenanigans they're playing inside their fed or whatever the the british um, um component of that is um so, so uh again this, you know it's all games being played by rich to steal money from who Oh, the people who live in the country. Convinced? Just borrow. So where are we up to? Eight minutes. Okay, so I can just do this one. Oh, I'll slip in. So this is a three thingy thing. But this I can make short because it's all mine. This is totally retarded. So yes, he's proud that this is his brilliant analysis of how the world works. From why do people make these comments? The answer. Yes, yeah, so uh, I argue they make the comments because they see the bus on fire. They see, like, the fire coming out of the back of the bus. And they're, hey, shit, there's a fire coming out of the bus. Yeah, and they're pointing it out. There's, there's a problem. I see it. I see the problem. Now, sometimes they don't see it right, okay? It's not the bus that's on fire. It's really just the wheel or something. You know, they don't identify the fire properly. But they're getting the idea that something's not right. There's black smoke and there's stuff and something's not right. They're figuring that out. They're not getting exactly the right problem, you know, uh, you know. But they're they're getting the idea that something this thing isn't moving right. 
and he's you know this is his this is what he thinks people are doing seems to be to be loved that's basically it so people comment they make videos on YouTube he's doing his videos to be loved which I, I find a ridiculous statement on his part <laughs> but, but whatever okay we're supposed to believe he gives a fuck about what Joe stinky pants um, thinks of him uh, which I think is just ridiculous but whatever and but he's basically Im implying that somehow I am doing this critiquing his slop because I'm looking to be loved by somebody like who what like what 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 entity am I am I oh please love me bullshit where who 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 it's an insanely stupid comment it's 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 it's, it's moronic analysis again I have many things I enjoy doing I wouldn't bother expressing my creativity I wouldn't make this movie if, if you gave me any freedom whatsoever to live in a world where I didn't have to worry about you assholes being, being preposterously stupid I'm a very creative person there's lots of really great stories I'd like to tell or like to explore I wouldn't be doing this shit at all and I certainly would never be doing any of it for anything called love. For fuck's sake! Make the video, these videos. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a definitely a, um, I do it because um, I love the piece of art I'm, I've created, or I do it. Where's the money? <laughs> Fuck you! I do it so I can, you know, live more comfortably or more securely. I don't do any of this shit for any bullshit love. I mean, it's just such a silly argument to, to think that all these people make all these comments out of anything other than um, some sort of notion of preserving whatever, white heritage, or fighting against gross injustice. You're going to have to wait. Get yeah, thumbs up. Now, to be honest, I go to the effort of going in behind in the menu and turning off the thumbs up so you can't see the thumbs up and thumbs down. And that, the, the, whether you do that or not, obviously they don't work. You can't turn off the fact that they're still going to exist. You can just turn off the functionality. And yeah, I don't see any problem with that because the, frankly, the system doesn't reflect the average or any, it doesn't, it isn't giving you any real information. It's just telling you maybe how many haters you have. I mean, I had the last video I posted on the Draft Physics channel, it had nine likes and zero dislikes. And then like two hours later, it had <coughs> 12 likes and 19 dislikes. Now it seems kind of obvious that the audience didn't just radically change opinion, so it seems like there's just a, one or two people who are called haters who decided to cheat the system. So, you know, yeah, and nobody fixes the cheated system. So, I mean, here we have cheat systems that don't really work. People are pretending it means something when it can't possibly mean something because you can just spam the fuck out of it. So it's useless as information. Um, and yet, everybody just pretends it has something to do with reality. And it has nothing to do with any kind of real measure of any kind of real thing except how motivated are your haters. I never checked to see if it was working. Apparently this morning I found out it wasn't working and everybody can see the thumbs up and thumbs down. Yes, they can see it, but nobody can make it go up and down, so it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't affect the matter that I do the videos so I can get some love. All right, that just sounds so insipidly silly. I mean, really, can anybody believe that he does the videos for that reason? I don't know. He did all those years of over the peak because he needs to be loved. Make the comments so they can get some love. We basically do most things in life so we can get some love. I just can't, I just, sorry, yes. I mean, I guess I could sort of make an argument that obviously that's not what I'm doing because I can't stand people and have done everything I can to get away from them, but whatever. So that's the second thing. We'll just go on to this one, which is about um, UBI. Again, they're still on it on The Guardian, a new article. And somebody in the comments brings up something that, if people are interested, um, we can go deeper into, uh, which is the UJG. 
it's not as snappy as UBI, universal job guarantee. Basically, if you're out of work, the government guarantees you a job. Right, okay, now all of these things don't tend to not work because it just ends up being make work. So he brought up the fact that they didn't have sweeps, street sweepers in his city and then they got sweet street seat sweepers and now they have flowers and all kinds of pretty things in the street because the streets are clean somehow that means now you can plant flowers or something i don't know how the two things are related but regardless uh, and so it's very nice and so i guess he would be all for uh spending money on creating jobs if their jobs have some sort of social utility but obviously we're not in that circumstance because we have all this cheap labor and, and so it's really not about you know creating work the real point is is whether we work for capitalists or whether we work for the government now I would argue that you can't work for you can't have the government system as long as the government's a union and as long as it's extortionist and they get way overpaid and their benefits are way too high and they're just tax evaders and they don't even pay into Social Security and it's just a pile of shit but if you create not-for-profit businesses that aren't tied directly to the government they just have to be regulated by the government then it can work. So yes, take get the corruption out of it and then it works because those businesses can compete very well with all the other shyster businesses and instead of wasting your time selling stuff you might be working making stuff and that would be a huge improvement. But whatever. Um, it's just a variation on the UBA I theme. So he thinks giving people money for nothing is a variation on the theme as giving people money for working. I don't think it's exactly the same. I don't think it's the same theme. I don't. I think it's pretty fucking different. Money for doing absolutely nothing, uh, and money for going to work. Yeah, I think those are different, substantially different. Anyway, so this is the uh, another video of his. Um, I am bullshit. Um, so just basically defending the, the, the terrible system we have, the terrible flaws in it, and basically just saying, don't worry, be happy. Uh, this is the way humans have always been. We always, you know, you wait a few years, we'll drop some nukes, you know, kill 50 million people, we'll do this, we'll do this. this is just the human beings act this way. There's no way to change anything. Talking about it is a waste of time, which in, in my opinion is just fucking ludicrous argument. Obviously, talking about it and acting up and all that kind of crap does change policy. Nixon would have never ended the Vietnam War if people didn't point out how they hate it. <laughs> if they sat around and just said, who cares, then we would have stayed in Vietnam. Just a fact. I mean, I don't want to trouble you with facts, but it's a fact. Getting yourself upset on something that doesn't merit getting upset about, which is what we see now on the internet. Right, so this doesn't merit it, this whole class thing that's happening, the rich getting richer, the middle class getting smaller, and the poor, you know, just as, as a practical matter, just creating chaos systems to manage the poor, which aren't going to work. You're importing poor people that you can't, you can't even afford to take care of the people you have that are poor, yet you're importing more poor people. That can't possibly make any fucking goddamn sense. And we're seeing in Ireland, certainly over on this side on Brexit, and probably in America about Trump. It's really not worth it. Okay. Right, so again, it's not worth talking about. It's not worth arguing about. Just let it keep happening. And, and the, you know, the Trump policies, it's going to take so long to unravel all of the the stuff done because obviously no one wants to hear about raising taxes or any kind of stuff like that they'll just get back where we were just to get the tax code back to where it was is going to take a monumental effort just to get back to the bad place we were already in that's how bad things are and he's saying people shouldn't be pissed they shouldn't be agitated they shouldn't be worried for their children yeah I think they should be very afraid very fucking afraid I'll just finish with this because I normally read comments out. This is a comment by Pope Gregory the Ninth, who might have been a good pope or not. I haven't. I don't know the history of Pope Gregory the Ninth, and I don't think I can be bothered looking him up. Anyway, this um, the article was about Google. I'll, I'll read the whole comment so we can get more of an idea, so we're not just coming in. This is quoting the article, 
of Gregory is quoting the article. The memo claimed that it was wrong for Google, a company with 80% of its technical roles held by men, to be pursuing diversity. And Pope Gregory says, it didn't say that at all, and I expect you know that. Well, it seems a subtle issue. Um, yeah, so I don't know if gender diverse. I didn't watch this part. I just watched the first part where he's just saying, don't worry about anything. I would argue that yeah, sometimes these feminist issues get a little bit gnarly because it's all just about show rather than go. So I don't know if it matters that much, but we'll see. This is just to basically say, it's not just the commenters on the internet. The internet itself uh, through media, and I wouldn't be surprised if it happens on the television. I don't know, but newspapers seem to be awful now. They just don't seem to do. That they're selling product now, and they know it more overtly than at any time in human history. That it's only about selling the product. So. They have computer programs that actually run that probably figure out what ads go well with what kind of stories. And so it's just about getting people to purchase, to make the ads more valuable to um, the, the, the companies. So the companies want the ad to mean something. They don't want to put an ad in your fucking paper that you just flip over. They want to put an ad in the paper where you actually read the article. And, and so there's, get it, there's a huge connection now, huge, the two things have been mixed together because of institutions like Google, where they're just engineering news or engineering the, the, the memes of our society based on what ads sell. <laughs> you know, who's buying the ads will decide what stories you talk about and vice versa. And that's a disgustingly invidious change in how we do business in the world. That's a change. And those things that change, people should talk about them when you change things. When you decide to open the doors on the Titanic. It should be talked about. Why all that extra fresh air might be dangerous. They are just an article now. <laughs> it's really for me. It wants to generate comments and controversy so people watch it. It doesn't Yay. Need to inform. Exactly. The news is a for profit business. The advertisers have a huge incentive. They're deciding the copyright. They're deciding the, the not the the editorial um, demeanor of the paper. So yes, it's just a corporate business telling you what's supposed to be important to you. And that doesn't sound like it's going to be very human friendly. So yes, if you're, why do you even read the Guardian? <laughs> I have no clue. But I, yeah, I wouldn't be wasting my time doing it. And the people like me, guilty, want to read the controversy, not the content, because the content is worth it. Okay. Yeah, why you want to wa even read the, the, the e e even if you why you even want to read the controversy or the drama when it's so predictable that yes it's obviously right and left it's obvious Democrat and Republican and those divisions are getting stronger and stronger and <clears throat> the subdivisions are the more interesting divisions in my opinion the the, the fact that Democrats have somehow flipped into defending uh, excess labor policies which are really stupid like you know they're not for open borders but they're too close to it they're basically saying scab the fuck out of the work environment so that doesn't even make any sense that that reversal has happened you know that if you want to be if you want to try to save us from um, excess labor you have to vote Republican somehow but they're not really going to fix it so you know that's the, the lie um, but the rest of them are pretty traditional. I mean, if you're for kind of some sense of a fair fight and equal rights for women and all that kind of stuff, you vote Democrat. And if you're a, a fascist, um, elitist cunt, then you vote Republican. Not very complicated. Idiots and bullies, I will judge them for that. That was in the article. And Pope Gregory comes in with fine. 
but conservatives or people of right-wing persuasion aren't automatically either of those things, which is where your entire argument falls down. You get the idea from the... Uh, from the well, well, they're usually one of two things. They're religious kooks or um, financial fascists who think they earned it, even though they inherited it. They think inheriting is a form of earning. <laughs> yeah, which is pretty fucked up. Like you, a stupid cunt. From that, that if pe people are bigots and bullies, I will judge them for that. The, the author of the article is implying that right-wing people are generally bigots and bullies. Well, 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 they're worse than bullies. Again, it's 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 like they they take the big money stick that Daddy gave them and they beat the hell out of everybody else talking about yeah, pull up your own bootstraps, get your own fucking net. Yeah, my daddy gave me the type water, you know, the type rope with the big giant net under it. Go get a different daddy. I mean, it's just an it's, it's an insanely silly argument. You know, go back and kill your mother because she was poor. She didn't marry the right man. I, I mean, it's just so fucking stupid an argument. Yes, they're bullies. They're insane lunatics. They should be thrown the fuck overboard. They're so fucking stupid. Pope Gregory is saying, fine, you can say that, but conservatives or people of right-wing persuasions aren't automatically either of those things. So you shouldn't be saying it. You're a journalist. You should not be saying these things. Well, again, the demograph de demographically, that's what they are. So they, they revealed themselves. The Trumpies revealed themselves, and the people who went along with it revealed themselves. So yes, it was all about the money for the reg regular Republicans, so they held their nose and voted for who they knew to be an imbecile. A guy who went bankrupt six times is supposed to know something about the economy. Um, you, you know, a, a guy who hasn't paid any income taxes because he hasn't made enough money to make up the money he lost 15, 18 years ago. So 18 years ago he lost a huge amount of money, a billion and a half dollars, and he still isn't paying income taxes because he still hasn't made enough profits to pay that old debt off in the sense of create new wealth. And the very fact that the rich have this out, like the rest of us could do that, you know, like I could lose 20 bucks on the sidewalk and somehow I get to deduct it off my taxes. We don't get to deduct our losses. How come the rich get to deduct theirs? What a pile of crap. What an unfair system. They lose money in the gambling stock market. They get to deduct it off their fucking taxes. If I go to uh, Las Vegas and lose the money, I don't get to deduct it and say, oh, I had losses this year. No, I don't get any tax breaks. It's just a bullshit system. You're holding your nose because you know it, you fucking cunt. You're fucking goddamn piece of shit saying that the, the general tone of that comment isn't correct in the sense that if somebody points out that the rich are basically racist or greedy, uh, that somehow they've, they've misdiagnosed the problem or are lunatic religious, that they haven't figured out what they are, that they're generally the fascist party. You fascist. And this is where I would have gone to straight away, but that was what I've just done is in way of introduction to this. Quoting again from the article, I discriminate against people who are right-wing and conservative. I'm entirely happy to say so. That was in the article, I'll repeat. I discriminate against people who are right-wing and conservative. I'm entirely happy to say so. Yes, I would probably do likewise. I mean, if you know, I just took a poo and I didn't wash my hands, <laughs> I'm more likely to shake the hand of a rich man and not care. Say, yo, I did a good job there, didn't I? Yeah, I, I'm sure my, my bias against the rich would <laughs> reveal itself in all kinds of subtle little ways where, yes, I, I'll, I'll you know pet the kitty, but I'm not going to pet the, the scurvy, uh, syphilis-covered rat. So Pope Gregory comes in with, okay, then they are justified in discriminating against you too, and will all eventually tear each other apart. 
That's where we're heading, exactly. So the only way to stop that from happening is to, to start yelling at each other. And at some point in the conversation, everybody goes, oh, I can see where this goes, that we have to have some sort of compromise. We have to make some sort of deal because you're finding us insufferable. We're finding you insufferable in your current condition. And yes, this will just lead to eventually there's going to be an opportunity where you can wear a blue uniform and I can wear a gray one and we'll kill each other. Because yes, that's where we're heading. We're plowing right for it. As straight a line as we could almost draw, we're plowing that road right to that disaster. So yes, the rational people have to open their mouths and have a conversation about the fact that this, whatever this is, isn't acceptable and we need new terms. And this is what I'm saying here. Getting so upset that you're going to say in a newspaper article that's going to get published, I discriminate against people who are right-wing and conservative is just... It's being honest, that's right. I discriminate against religious kooks. I discriminate against uh, economic fascists. I discriminate against racial bigots. That's the rational thing to do. You impose on imposers. You punch rapists in the nuts. That's what you do. Demanding trouble. And this is the expression... Doing nothing is an acceptable response. Saying, go ahead, fuck me in the ass is, the, is not an option. So you do that. You bend over and let us fuck you instead. <laughs> Shit. He's just sitting there in his little elitist uh, comfort zone, pretending that uh, everything's fine. What are you fuckers complaining about? I've got my gold in the backyard. Um, you know, I, I played the crooked games, and my best friends were a bunch of inheritance welfares, and I thought they were very friendly and fun. Very productive. Very productive. In all of their waste and squander, I watched right before me as I'm polishing their fucking hardwood yacht. <laughs> you know, he actually did that kind of shit. He actually polished their their furniture, this cunt, and didn't understand how, oh, this was all wasted labor that could have built the Hoover Dam. You know, all this yacht making could have actually been put some, to something of human use. There was a time in French history where they hadn't had wars for a long time, and they got bored, and they kind of went around looking for trouble. That's kind of what it meant in it historical sort of way and this is what I think we get on the internet now. oh yeah we're, we're just they're, they're just looking for trouble their trouble isn't right in their face in their um, you know their wages being worth half of what they should be more, probably more than that um, no that trouble isn't obvious and right in their face <laughs> Jesus what a fucking idiot nothing to complain about here everything's just swell we are so we just go round looking for trouble, picking fights for the sake of it, because that is what humans do. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, just can you get more glib? Can you get more fucking glib? This huge debt, this huge rent, the rent keeps going up, the rent keeps going up, the rent keeps going up. The price, the, the, the amount of your, your income that you're paying for food or the amount of your income that you're paying for fuel, it keeps going as a higher percentage of your total income. Your your what what was called free time is getting smaller and smaller. And this idiot says there's nothing to see here, and that there's no cause for that effect. It's not because the rich are taking a bigger cut of your salary. That's not why your salary is getting smaller. Even though it's the most obvious, plain in your face <laughs> truth that that's what happens. The rich get richer. Somebody has to get poorer. That's the way the system works, retard. And I am being the adult in the room and saying, watch out for this sort of thing. When you go around looking for fights, you'll generally get them. And more important. Well, yeah, no, more important is, is that this is an inevitable problem. You have an unsustainable system that you're glibly saying, well, go ahead and finance it with more unsustainable debt. Go make some more ups, ups. You have an idea? Yes, finance it unsustainably because that somehow makes sense. 
uh, don't don't make tanks by actually paying for them. No, borrow money from rich men and make the tank so you can pay 10 zillion times more than the value of the tank because you'll never pay the loan off. You'll never pay the principal. You'll just keep paying interest forever. So yeah, why don't you buy your taxi cab rides that way and you can have a million dollar taxi cab ride eventually. It's, it's a stupid system. We are forced to play this stupid game of rent, okay, forever. Never pay off a single frickin' debt. It doesn't work. That can't work for the working person. As I said earlier, there will be times in your life where you will want to use extreme when you will be uh, it's, it doesn't extreme. matter it doesn't matter the time is coming one way or the other we either do it ahead of time because it's rational or we wait for the crisis and then hope that the masses will do the right thing and you know elect a Roosevelt or something who will figure out how to fix the problem by not making the rich richer <laughs> you know he won't have let's make the rich richer as the solution and it's best to have that expansionary space left untouched so it can be used and then contracted back. All of this over puffed up stuff that's being used all the time, it's it's childish. Well, whatever. I don't he, so his examples of over puffed up is who knows what. I mean these are real subjects he's talking about. Uh, you know, immigration, debt. These are these are real subjects, the rich getting richer and he just pretends, no, nothing to see here. Anyway, just glib crap. To be so permanently over puffed up like the people on the internet and the people that think... Right, there's no Titanic, there's no crisis coming, they haven't destroyed all of the mechanisms that make the boat unsinkable, they haven't ruined FDIC insurance, they didn't give a ton of money to rich people to prevent their bankruptcy. They haven't just given huge tax benefits. They're going to make it possible for billionaires never to pay taxes like Trump did for 20 years. Don't pay federal income tax. You have a billion dollars. You're claiming you got $9 billion richer somehow, and yet you didn't pay any taxes. You got $9 billion richer, and you didn't pay any federal income tax on any of that uh, enlarged wealth. Or else you're a compulsive liar and you're president of the United States. Either one of those things is worthy of a fucking comment. You fucking piece of scum. It's worthy of people's notice to say that's a problem. That's smoke coming out of the back of the bus. That's the wrong color smoke. They must tell Aunt Marjorie how wrong she was in doing what she did. Right, because she'll figure it out all on her own somehow when the war starts. Well, that's too late, asshole. So, yeah, it's a good idea to tell assholes when they're being assholes. <clears throat> you know... To sit there and get all paranoid about these sanctuary cities and say, therefore, I'm going to vote for tax cuts for the rich because I'm afraid of immigration was a dumb thing to do. Really stupid to sell out the entire fucking foundation of our civilization to the fucking carpetbaggers, um, you know, because you think there's too many immigrants when they're not going to fix it anyway, and you know it. You know Trump's not going to kick out cheaply. He's not going to ruin the idea of cheap labor, for fuck's sake, so he's only going to throw out a few illegals, for show. <coughs> and he's certainly going to make it possible for them all to die easier by giving them no health care and making sure they um, don't make enough money to pay their bills, so they're in debt. And this scum sits there and says we should just sit back and take that kind of crap up our little buttholes. Fuck you, asshole. Jeez, you can't get run over by a French tank soon enough. You fucking cunt. I mean, with all these countries, they have their revolutions. I mean, the French Revolution was so obvious. See, our, our revolution wasn't nearly as obvious. You know, it wasn't against the, the Acristos, <laughs> yeah, the, the Richies. You know, the French Revolution was just so obviously against the aristocracy. You know, it was just so obviously against the inheritance wealthers, the monarchy. And then they just backslided right back into, you know, these turds listening, you know, living among us. Ugh. Oh, he removed the video? What a weasel! 
Oh, he is such a little Weasley cut. I guess I, you know, I don't, you know, since I switched to Linux, I don't have the same program, so I can't save the videos quite as easily. So I didn't save it before he deleted it. What a pussy. Oh, God. Damn. <laughs> Shit. So if anybody has bullshit 6T, you know, <laughs> whatever it is, bull, whatever, he's afraid to say shit. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, there's no point. So, I'll spare you more of the same critiques. Hey, it's my video. Um, yeah, so I'm just going through my videos and taking, taking notes. So I'm compiling a whole bunch of notes of all the videos here. And I hope to write that into something eventually. So I am working on it. <laughs> Just don't like it much, tell you the truth. That's sick of everything. Ugh. But yeah, so it's it's like it's bad enough that we have enemies, but it's these people, these fence sitters are so fucking irritating. They're more disgusting. The little traitors you have on your own side are just so bad. I mean, they make it so much worse. Ugh. Yuck. Anyway, till next time. Fuck the rich.